we are often asked by parents, what do I do? I'm learning these things that I want to use, these new tools, these new skills I want to use with my children in our home. But we've got the school, we've got the grandparents, we've got the church nursery. How do I get everybody into one voice? And we ask, that's a goal for us, is have one voice with the care of the child. Well, in the first part of that equation, it's going to be necessary for you to keep that child close and at home for a while till what you're doing becomes really sturdy. So you're the voice and the child is becoming sturdy. But then if you can go to the teacher or the grandparent or the babysitter, say, look, here are three things that we've learned that make a real difference for our son or our daughter. Um, we've learned that they're really got the sensory Reactivity, and, and it's primarily in this section, I've even asked parents to ch copy Xerox one chapter of a book or loan, loan the book with one chapter marked and say, would you just look at this one? We realize our child has X sensory issue. And if you'd read this chapter, you'd understand what it looks like. Um, or we have uh, are learned that our child has aversion to or fear levels about this. Here's one brief four-page thing. Would you read this? So we ask our families to choose one to three things to share with their families or their other caregiving environments for their children. Make those things. Remember, everybody else in the world that they live in, the teachers got overwhelmed with course preparation and classwork and the so forth, and parents and grandparents, church nurseries, every other care provider or every other part of your team is going to have a world that's filled with their own activities too. So be respectful of that, but think of the three things that you need most from the environment. We're teaching our child to talk with respect to us, and we're talking to, with respect to him. So when he says something mouthy, we're just saying, oh, buddy, try it again with respect. Would you do that for, for us at school? We just want him to know we value respect. That's one thing that's clean, that's simple. Every caregiver in this child's environment can be doing that. Um, we've learned our child's got sensory issues, um, and we weren't aware of this. Here's one little nugget of something that we've seen. Here's some things that we see, how this behavior manifests, and I've, I've, I've marked them here on this page, or I've put a sticky note. You just read these three pages on this book. You'll know more about our child. And maybe we've recognized something about our child's level of fear and that that's what's driving the behavior. So we're wanting to be sure that we connect deeply, that we let him feel safe, and this is how we're feeling safe. And here's an article you can download that I've downloaded from a website, from the ETC website, on um, caught between the amygdala and a hard place. Could you just read this little couple of pages? So ask for a few things. Pick the things that are most important. I would give that caregiver a, a behavioral tool, like try it again with respect. That's a really important one. Um, that redo is a powerful concept. I would give them an awareness of a little bit of material. If brain chemistry, uh, fear chemistry, or sensory issues are predominant in your child's behavior, I'd give them just a little nugget on those. And then check back in with them. Probability is that they will ask you for more material over time. But just feed them little bits in ways that they can help your child's journey. And I think a good way to start with a presentation to a, another caregiver, a parent, a grandparent, a, a friend, a neighbor, a babysitter is, I know how devoted you are to our family and our children, and and we're learning to be advocates in new ways, and I wanted to share some of that material with you because I know you want to advocate for our child too. Um, be sure you let them know how much you appreciate them and how, all that they want to do for your child and, and their heart of compassion and love for your child and for your family. But give them a few tools, give them practical tools, give them tools that they can put their teeth into and use right now. I think you'll find that your team that works with your child can become pretty solid and pretty dynamic in a very short period of time.